Welcome to this week's In Focus on Whitewater Community Television's WGTV Channel 11. I'm Eric Marsh. Thank you very much for joining us for this week's In Focus conversation, where the literacy is the general topic. We'll be talking about uh, a couple of different organizations in town that are really kind of wrapped up into one. I don't want to say organizations, probably programs. Every Child Can Read, um, Third Grade Reading Academy, Dolly Parton's um, Imagination Library, which you've probably heard about, hopefully you have. Um, and talk about literacy, talk about maybe some resources that, that parents can have. Uh, general conversation we're going to have with Jackie Scott, who is the um, K-Ready Program Coordinator. Am I right with that? Yes. Yes, and thank you. Becky Jewison, who is a board member for Every Child Can Read. Correct. Ladies, thank you very much for taking the time to talk with me. I really do appreciate your time today. Well, thanks for having us. We're excited to talk about anything about our programs we're excited about. <laughs> okay. Be before we kind of get into to the meat of the conversation, as it were, um, give me an idea of why each of you came to this particular organization? What about it um, attracted you? What, what kind of keeps you involved? Um, Becky, I know that you were um, an employee. You're now a board member. It, obviously, there's a passion for the topic of literacy. Talk about what that is for you and, and how you came to this. Um, yes, I, well, I, I was uh, working at, at Reed Health and getting ready to retire and kept thinking about what I would do next um, and looking at the community, watching really from the Reed Health perspective, the changes that were happening in the communities around us and just what could I do? And I picked a couple of things and one of them was to help uh, with the literacy and, and the birth to five specific uh, situation in Wayne County and uh, Every Child Can Read was a place that I was very much aware of because um, I have friends who work there. I had, you know, um, knew uh, Rick A. House very well, who who helped start, you know, the the third grade academy, and it just fell into place. And uh, I was offered the uh, what is now Jackie's job, but I was offered the K Ready uh, position, and thought I'm going to do that for a little while while I get used to retirement. And it was the perfect thing. And I was I'm just amazed at how much. Um, we could do when, when I realized what the programs did, how much I could do and, and how um, much this, these programs could grow. So it was very exciting for me to be part of this right out of you know, working full time to, to just something, a new passion that was really so well needed in this community, the, the work with literacy and, and birth to five, as I said, specifically for me. So. Talk a little bit about what you, stepping into that position, you, you obviously cared, but stepping into that position, you said you kind of learned what you could do, what those programs could do. Talk a little bit about what you learned stepping into that program, because sometimes we watch things from afar, we admire what organizations do, but until we're actually involved with them, we don't really completely get it. So talk about a little bit about what you learned. Well, first of all, uh, as I, when I started, I knew of K Ready, um, and I mostly knew of the Third Grade Academy and Every Child Can Read, which is the umbrella or the parent organization, wasn't a a household word as much. And the excitement of the K Ready programming that could be possible, um, and and we were already doing uh, Dolly Parton Imagination Library, and we were doing. Um, uh, what are our programs, if you want me to say that, um, the books at birth, the Rx for reading at well visits, community events, we were doing that, but I wasn't even that aware and, and I uh, of those things going on. So when I started the excitement of, of expanding and getting those names out in the community and making them all bigger and making people more aware of them, um, was what excited me and was what I realized needed to be done, I thought, um, for the community to be more aware of what we were doing and how easy it was for them to get involved and how easy for us to, to get into uh, doctor's offices and, um, and do more when we hand out things at uh, Reed Health for books at birth. Um, it could just be bigger and we could expand. And that was 
truly the excitement for me of, of being not just the reading academy that for third graders, um, but this birth to five piece that we could sell and get out there and say, hey, look at, look at this. This is not a hard thing to do and look what it can accomplish for, ki for preparing kids for kindergarten and beyond. So that was truly exciting for me. Cool. Jackie, uh, uh, talk about you. What, what brought you to the K-Ready program? Every child can read. What was, what was the passion um, or your feeling to, to come to this? Um, well, my, my background is, is actually education. I was, um, long ago, <laughs> I was a special education teacher uh, for many years and then got out of that and did several other things. Um, I was also working at Reed Health for a while. And when I stopped that job and, and started working more part-time, I had the time and opportunity to kind of get out there and, and volunteer and, um, you know, see what, see what was going on a little more in the community. And I guess from that education background, literacy and, and children are just absolutely a passion. Um, I had heard of um, Third Grade Academy when it started um, many years ago now and just thought that was an absolutely phenomenal idea for to community members to kind of partner with schools, community schools, and come up with this, um, just, you know, this idea that impacts kids so much. And so I, I went and talked to, to Becky, who was there at the time, and to Kim English, um, and started volunteering at first kind of more on a technical, technical kind of computer doing database kind of things for them. And then, um, yeah, when Becky decided to move on to some other things and that position came open and took that position. So, <laughs> so just, it's, a, it's a great program. And as Becky was sharing, I mean, it just reaches so many families and children. Um, and the perspective for growth that, that we continue to see and the ability to reach even more and more. Just very exciting, very exciting. Talk to us about the, or, the, the organization, the overarching organization, and then I guess the programs that fall underneath that. Because even you all have both mentioned that you came into this and didn't fully understand everything that was that was a part of it. So those of us on the outside looking in, probably Third Grade Reading Academy, again, like you all, a name that I know that I am aware of. Um, being here on the IU East campus, we've had a chance to work with, with Francis Yates in the library, interact with some of the kids that have been part of that program through the years. Dolly Parton's Imagination Library, heard a little bit about. Talk about the the, the organization of Every Child Can Read and then the programs that fall underneath that so the community kind of understands that that organization and what all we're talking about. Sure. Um, so, so the umbrella organization is Every Child Can Read um, and kind of under that we we kind of see it in two separate two kind of organizations under that. We have the Third Grade Academy which is our, our summer intensive reading program. And then the other side of that are the K-Ready programs. Um, and then that would include um, Dolly Parton, um, Books at Birth, all of the types of programming where we can distribute books throughout the community kind of fall into that category. Um, in our, under our third grade reading academy, then we do, we have um, a director that, that um, heads that up. And then of course, a summer staff um, of people that, that actually work with the children during that program. So you're, you're correct. I think most people in the community have heard of the third grade academy, um, but maybe aren't so aware of all of the other programs that we do and ways that we get out there and and get books into the community. 
let, let's start on the on the the K ready side. Talk about that side of the organization a little bit, what it does, how you connect with people. I know you all have mentioned books in doctor's offices. My, my girls are all grown and moved on. So I haven't been in, in a doctor's office like with an with a infant in quite a number of years. Um, for those who, who may be experience, experiencing that now or they know that's a part of their life in the in the next year or two even. Talk about what type of resources you all have and, and, and what that side of the program is actually meant to do. Um, do you want me to take this, Jackie, or are you? <laughs> um, <clears throat> so uh, the, the programs, the K-Ready programs, um, uh, you know, and I'm not sure which exactly started first, but, and I think about 2013 is when we, uh, Dolly Parton Imagination, <clears throat> excuse me, Imagination Library, money was given to us uh, by the Wayne County Foundation to start giving, to start signing up kids for that program with about 600 kids. Um, and currently we're about 2000 and something, so. In Wayne County? In Wayne County. And, and you can know, we are the Wayne County affiliate and <clears throat> each county has to have its own affiliate that oversees the program. So we are the Wayne County. So it's only through us, uh, Every Child Can Read, that you can sign up for Dolly Parton Imagination Library or contribute to help a child uh, because it is free for them. Anyone who signs up, it is free to get 12 books a year mailed to your child at your home. Um, and we pay the cost. So we fundraise and people can pay $25 a year to sponsor a child uh, kind of thing to help um, to help that program along. So we're constantly raising money to keep that program going. And um, through Books at Birth, which is uh, a great program uh, through Read Health, as, as we said, where every child that's born at Read um, has always gotten a, a book and now a backpack, Read to Your Bunny. It's a great little book. Um, <laughs> and since 2020 now, we're able to give them uh, to try to sign them up for the Dolly Parton Imagination Library. So that's a huge step for us in reaching out even more um, to, to all, all the kids in, in the county, really a little bit beyond, we, we at least get to give them a book. Um, but Wayne County children, you know, that come to read definitely can get signed up now. The other piece um, called RX for Reading, Prescriptions for Reading, uh, really is based on um, a national program that doctors started in their offices, uh, reading, reading Across America, I believe it is, uh, reading, I, I forget the exact name, I'm going to look it up. Um, say it again, Jackie. Reach out and read. Reach out and read. I'm sorry. Yeah, so reach out and read program that doctors wanted to start in their offices. Um, and we were already giving out books at well visits, which is about six um, visits for, for the year. And, and then trying to, you know, get them to take a book home. And we started the Rx for reading, uh, urging doctors and nurse practitioners, nurses, to also actually hand out a prescription for, um, for the child uh, to have to read 20 minutes a day, to, that, to either do it at home, to go to the library, uh, because it is a, a huge piece of wellness is uh, reading to your child in literacy. So we kind of combined those programs where they got a lot of books and you know, it was urging the parents to, to read through the RX for reading. And um, we gave out, uh, well over 2,500 books last year in that program, uh, which, which is wonderful and huge. And then we have started also signing up um, different groups through that program for the Dolly Parton Imagination Library. So I, I think you can see that the Dolly Parton piece we feel is just so important for this, you know, for Wayne County, for all kids but such an important piece because it is just proven if your books are in your home and kids can pick them up, parents can pick them up and read, siblings can read to siblings, they are gonna be more prepared for kindergarten. And in, I believe this county or even maybe nationally, 60% of kids are not ready for kindergarten. 
That's a huge number. And we're trying very hard to reach, especially the kids who maybe don't have a uh, preschool or a daycare where they get some of this. So uh, those programs hopefully touch on, on a lot of different families uh, to help help them with that. And then, and then just uh, the community events we go to, to hand out books. We go to lots of fairs and, and um, school, school things, maybe uh, registering for kindergarten. You know, we try to get out there and make sure families have books in their hands. Um, so uh, big, uh, really big ways that, that we're trying to expand on and, and create um, opportunities for every family that we can to take a book home because you know Dolly Parton figured this out when she started um, what she did in just in Tennessee, mm -hmm. where the literacy the the, the, Ill, the illiterate rate was very high. Sorry, um, and she just wanted her county to have the books, and then it was her <laughs> whole state got the books, and then it just blew up from there to something like 130 million books she has given out or some yeah I believe. Uh, since she started it, so um, so I, you know, we feel this is this is a significant way to prepare kids for kindergarten, and and it seems like such an easy way, you know, to us to just convince parents and families just get that book out or just help your child be ready. It just a huge difference that leads right into where are they by second and third grade, which is the next piece of what we do. Are they ready by then? So when you say, that's kind of where we cut off and one program leads into the other. When you say ready for kindergarten, can you talk a little bit to the, the new parents maybe that are, are listening or grandparents who may be helping raise? What does ready for kindergarten look like? What type of things would you be expecting at age two, age three, age four? Um, for kids to be able to do, be able to read. What is ready for kindergarten really mean? Um, I may let Jackie take that one as a teacher, but if you want to, Jackie. Sure. You know, I think maybe there's people here, you know, I need to get my child ready for school. And that may sound a little intimidating. Um, and I don't, really believe that it has to be. I think more of what we're talking about is things that happen very naturally just through language and um, experience with books and learning learning what it means to, to sit and listen to a book. What is a book? What, what are words? You know, how do they relate to your everyday life? Um, and just that nurturing um, atmosphere that that comes very naturally from when you are sitting with a with your child reading a book all those kind of things lead to a child being ready for school it's not necessarily that they can count to 10 they know their abcs and and all that kind of stuff that's that's going to progress if you're reading to them um, a lot of the books obviously may, you know, may be an alphabet book or a number book or a color book. And they're going to pick up on that just by reading to them. It, it's not something, you know, where parents have to feel like they have to spend time, you know, sitting there and really like, you know, trying to get these concepts into their, into their child's brain. It's just, it, I think it's a very natural thing. Research shows that, that a child's brain grows 50% um, by the age of, um, in the first year. And then a brain is 90% formed by the time they're five. So that zero to five-year-old range, you, you can't go back and recapture that. It's just a very, very critical time for, for children with learning language and, and understanding what books are we were talking before we started the conversation and, and you mentioned that for some parents who, who may not be comfortable reading for, for whatever reason, it's really not even necessarily all about being able to read. There are other things that they can do to kind of help stimulate that child's 
mind, imagination, their, their learning and growth. Talk a little bit about that. Well, kind of like Becky was saying, it's ahead, like, yeah. you know, the nursery rhymes and, and songs and games, just that interaction that, that you have with your child. And just, just walking with a child, pointing out what something is, just constant, you know, the, just the talking to them, like you said, and taking a walk and what everything is, just like, just having those words said over and over in their mind to help prepare them to, to be able to have a teacher suddenly in their life that's going to, to be doing the same things and they're, they're ready for what's to come a little bit. So it doesn't, it may not be reading. Uh, to them, even though we say um, just 20 minutes a day uh, is all you really need to do to help prepare them even more uh, than someone who's not read to at all. It would, it, there's a big gap there that they've proven, um, but anything you can do to help them learn the words and be ready to hear hear words and what are words, what, what do they mean, what, what does it look like in a, in a book, um, is just going to put them just a little step ahead of, of someone who doesn't get that. You're watching In Focus on Whitewater Community Television's WGTV Channel 11. We're having a chance to, to speak with Jackie Scott, Becky Jewison, with uh, Every Child Can Read and everything that falls underneath that. <laughs> We're finding out that there is a lot under, under the umbrella of every child can read. Um, it, we've talked a little bit about trying to get kids ready for school and, and moved into the third grade reading academy. And, and um, I, I know that that program has a director. <laughs> I also know that obviously with the pandemic last year, that program took on a slightly different look um, can you all talk about what you what you are hearing, what you think that program is going to look like this summer? Is it going to be a little bit more back on track the way it has been in the past with kids at various places throughout the community? Or, or what are you looking at for that right now? Sure, yes. Um, so in the summer of 2020, with the pandemic, it did, we felt very blessed that we were able to go ahead and, and have the program. Um, our director and all of the teachers worked, just worked magic to transform it into what they um, renamed it uh, TGA to go. Um, and so last summer we had eight teachers and uh, I believe two interpreters and an interventionist and they actually served 78 children in, um, in the community by going to their homes. And then they also did, um, when they were able to, did some virtual kind of Zoom kind of interactions with them also. But they visited each child's home twice a week, um, spent time on front porches and front yards and, um, you know, just did a lot of activities. We were extremely blessed to have um, some help from United Way and, and several other community organizations. Read Health um, gave, um, made, excuse me, four, um, made meals for the children that the teachers delivered. Um, so it, it ended up being a, a fantastic program last summer, but, but very outside of what the norm was. This year, we are hoping, um, anticipating to get closer to the norm, maybe not quite back to what, what um, we've done in the past, but we are anticipating actually increasing our number of, of children because there's such even a bigger need now with, with this past school year and all the interruptions from COVID. Um, we're gonna, we anticipate about 170 kids normally we take about 100. So we're increasing to about 170. We will be all under one roof, which will be a little unusual. We're all gonna be at one of the um, Richmond schools under one roof. And um, we'll have about 17 teachers, 17 assistants, several um, interventionists and, and interpreters um, and feel like like that's a better option this year that we um, 
already through the schools, you know, there's a lot of COVID protocols and such in place that we can um, take advantage of. And the teachers are very comfortable. They've been in the, in the classrooms all year now. So, um, so that's the direction we're headed. We're really excited. We have a director that's um, been with us now for the last year and a half. And um, she's, she's on the ball and she's hiring people and we're, we're getting it all planned. The, the growth in the program this year, you <laughs> normally take about 100 kids. This year, you're taking 170. And, and the thought comes to mind, why or how the increase in numbers? Are we, are we seeing some loss from some of our students due to COVID? Is, is that one of the reasons the numbers are growing? Or, or what, what is the reason behind that? It's almost a, a doubling of the number. It is. And it is. Um, so when we met with um, a group of the teachers pretty much immediately after they finished up last summer's program, um, they were already being the very intelligent people that they are. They, they were already saying next year's going to be tough. You know, the kids aren't going to be in school in the normal way, um, most likely all year. And, you know, all the research is showing and that they, they were correct. There's been a lot of learning loss due to COVID um, and, and just the emotional um, strife that everyone has gone through due to that. So we started back in September, October of last year planning that we talked along with the teachers and said, if we can, um, get funding that we can expand the program. Is that what we need to do? And they were, they were on board. So that's what we set out to do. And we were um, very fortunate to get some additional grants. And so we have expanded it by about 70% um, for this summer. And hopefully we'll, we'll stay there. There is a need. Um, we generally, uh, so it's, in the, it's um, been called third grade academy because research shows that the children who don't read at grade level by the end of third grade have a much higher percentage risk of not graduating from high school um, and really struggling through the rest of school. So that's kind of a target area, but we also, um, kind of believe too that if we can reach those children earlier, which a lot of our K-Ready programs certainly do, but if we can reach children earlier, then hopefully we don't have as many that are coming upon that third grade mark. We're catching them earlier and, and remediating that. So in the past, we've always had some second graders, a few fourth graders, and this year even more, we've just decided it, it was time you know, the legacy of third grade academy is fantastic. It has, it has been such an asset to this community. Um, but what we're going to, we're kind of changing it to the reading academy beginning this year. Um, we are still sticking with that emphasis on third grade. So we work with the school district. Um, they are in the process right now, I believe, of getting back um, the, um, reports from the iread 3 tests, which all third graders take in the spring. Um, based on that, then a high 90 some percent of the children that don't pass that test do come through the third grade academy, through the reading academy with us. So we will be continue to take those um, high percentage of third graders that, that have not passed the test in the spring. And then we'll add on um, any other you know, children that maybe are just struggling still, um, second graders, fourth graders, whoever, whoever we can get and help, um, but we wanna expand it and, and work with those children and families to get them where they need so they can certainly succeed in school and then later down the road and whatever else they set out to do. And Eric, if I might, yeah. I think what's yeah. so great about, um, the organ our organization and the board is um, that that we've seen over the past few years the need to 
to change to with what's happening in in Wayne County and and in Richmond, which specifically is where you know uh, the TRA now the TGA was uh, is held in Richmond, but that we are seeing the need of the child is even bigger than um, literacy, and these teachers and what we're trying to do um, for them is we're we're very uh, conscious of that need, and I think it's great that we're trying to expand even more than we did, expand numbers, expand grades, expand um, help. Um, certainly we've, we've done help with uh, food uh, and things like that along the way. Um, but I just feel very excited that we're gonna grow even more and we're gonna look at a bigger picture again than was needed 15 years ago or so when we started. Um, it's, it's totally different than it was then. And I, you know, I'm very proud of this group that they see that, these teachers see that. And I think we offer an excellent program that may not look at all like it did 10 years ago, but it's really reaching out to what's needed, the families who need it, the kids. And uh, again, excited about where that goes. And, and I'm one of those people who loves the name, the Reading Academy, because I think <laughs> back when it started, they actually talked about are we a reading academy? Should we focus on being a third grade just only academy? And you can see that full circle, we've kind of realized that we're a reading academy and that's our main focus. And how do we help kids get to where they need to be to be successful in life, to graduate and beyond? So very excited about this group, these teachers, this board and what they're seeing as the future of this organization. You've been at this, the organization has been at this for a while. Can you talk a little bit about how you kind of track the success of the organization? It's obviously been able to continue. It's been able to get the funding that it needs to continue. So you're obviously telling your donors a positive story. Talk a little bit to the community at large about that story, what you're seeing as far as um, the, not just the need, but the successes through the years that have allowed you all to continue to operate? Sure. Um, I guess we can, we can look at a couple different things. Uh, back to the, the Dolly Parton Imagination Library. When we started in, I believe around 2013, um, through some funding through the Wayne County Foundation, we started with funding for 600 children and as, as Becky mentioned a little bit ago, we're up um, over 2,000 children now, ages zero to five in Wayne County. Um, according to the 2019 census, there's, there's about 4,200 zero to five-year-olds in Wayne County. So we have about 48% of those children now signed up and reading our Dolly Parton books, which has just been a phenomenal growth and can't, couldn't never have dreamed to do that without the community support through their, through their donations for sure. Um, working with Reed to be able to sign up the, the children that are now born at Reed, um, that catches obviously these babies right at birth and gives them books, a book a month for five years. So there's 60 books that they have in their home um, free of charge to them. You, you can't beat that. That's just phenomenal. Our, our goal, I think, kind of internally is to get to about 58, 60% of the kids in Wayne County. Um, we'd love to go even higher than that, obviously, but, but that's kind of our, our internal goal, I think. Um, and then in terms of the third, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the Reading Academy, uh, <laughs> We have a couple different measurable um, measurables that we look at. We definitely focus on attendance. It's about a 20 to 22 day um, academy that the children attend, usually during the month of June. And because it's, it's a kind of a short term thing, that attendance is, is very critical. Um, we've never been below 90% attendance, usually in the mid 90% attendance. So um, that's very high. The teachers, 
measure, the, the children come in and they've taken that iRead 3 test at school in the spring. We then give them the iRead 3 test at the end of the academy and the schools allow us to do that. So if the child passes um, in the summer, then they've now passed that test. And our goal obviously would be, you know, 100% of the kids pass that, you know, after the academy. Um, we would love that, but we do have a somewhere, I think around a 50 some average percentage of kids that then go on and pass that. Our growth, even if, if they don't pass, we do show in the high 60% um, range of kids that show growth after the academy. So even if they've not yet passed that I read three test, they are definitely, you know, have benefited from the academy. And just the narrative comments that we hear from the children, but also definitely their parents and grandparents, and uh, you know, just the fact that they now want to pick up and, and read a book in their free time. That's, that's a huge change in some of these children's lives that you, know, you can't really measure that by any standard, but it will make a difference in their life for sure. Oh, and it's lucky for, I'm sorry, it's lucky for us that the Dolly Parton Imagination Library has done a lot of uh, statistics uh, work to get statistics all over the country um, that we have tied into ourselves uh, to show what happens when, you know, a segment has the program and they can follow them. And we've talked about trying to make that another step to be able to follow kids into kindergarten. That's, that's a huge piece that's not that easy to do, but it would be great if we can at some point uh, work uh, with school system to be able to maybe track um, some of the kids who, who participate in the Dolly Parton Imagination Library or get our books at the, um, at the offices, uh, um, doctor's offices and things. But, um, but we've done surveys and we've done some other pieces for um, Dolly Parton and, and our just our database to see how, how it's going for them and how it's changed and helped their children. So we've tried to do our piece of that um, statistics that shows how we're doing so that we can talk to donors and, and for grants and things. And it has helped immensely and people are extremely um, helpful and giving to this program. You're watching In Focus on Whitewater Community Television's WGTV Channel 11. We're spending some time with Becky Jewison, a board member for Every Child Can Read, and Jackie Scott, program coordinator for K Ready. Um, you mentioned that you all are, are for particularly for the Dolly Parton piece, you all are Wayne County's affiliate for the Reading Academy. Is, is that a countywide program? Is that a Richmond specific program? Talk a little bit about that. If somebody's watching this and they're in, in Hagerstown or Cambridge City, how, how do they make the connection to some of these resources that you're talking about? Uh, yes, the Reading Academy is, um, is for the most part um, for Richmond Community Schools. We partner with them and so we kind of take that third grade chunk of their um, summer school program and, and work with them and coordinate with them to help through the Reading Academy. Uh, we do, we have had kids from some of the other local schools and things too, but uh, for the most part, it is Richmond. And the reason I think it's not countywide, I mean, Richmond is the, is the key place, but uh, the numbers of, of students in the county schools is very small and they have their own summer uh, programs that they touch on their needs also. So the big chunk really is Richmond and, and we've, we've included uh, Seton schools and um, other P uh, schools in Richmond, but, um, but the counties uh, really have programs to take care of, of the needs that they feel their children have. So that's, uh, we have had discussions with them in the past of how that works and what we could do if they, if they wanted to join us. But it made sense um, for their programs to be there in, in their school corporations. Is the topic of 
literacy and resources that are available to parents is is that in your minds and, and you all are obviously deeply involved in it is it the priority that it needs to be here in wayne county when you talk with our local political leaders some of the other not-for-profit organizations that that you all may be able to connect with and touch with to to help stimulate whether it's the, the young kids, whether it's the, the third grade reading academy, are we as a community, Wayne County as a whole, are we having enough discussion about this topic and, and helping move the needle as best we can or is there more work that we need to be doing? You all have talked through, throughout the time that we've been together, how important this is, particularly up, up to third grade. Um, for birth to third grade sounds like to be the, the, uh, an incredibly important time. Are we dealing with this the way that, that we need to as a community for the growth that we all say that we want? Well, I would certainly say that um, if, I feel that if we were, we would be like some other uh, counties, some other states where the state funds the Dolly Parton Imagination Library or organizations realize Everybody needs this. You know, the fact that we struggle, you know, to make sure every year we've got enough money to pay for it means that it's not maybe the top priority that it should be. Um, but great conversations within this county um, yes. and people involved in, in education and literacy, um, these people care and, and the drive to, to do better is there. It's, it's just got to be, it's got to be bigger. We have got to realize that this is like, this is number one. It, it plays into everything. It plays into jobs in your community, how well your community does, how many people stay in your community because of you know, the education and, and what's available to them. And it, it just plays into everything. And, and I think it's still a matter of, of getting people to realize that it, you have to start at the beginning of a child's life and put more emphasis financially um, on what is going on there. In my opinion, we still are a long way from recognizing how important that is in the education uh, of these children. Um, but, you know, we're, we're some things keep happening and we keep hoping <laughs> that uh, legislation will be passed that will help these things. And there are people who care so much, but I'm not sure, you know, we're, we're hitting that really that goal yet. Yeah, yeah there are several states. There are several states that um, through different means fund Dolly Parton's Imagination Library for all of the zero to five-year-olds in the state that, that want to be a part of it. Um, through their affiliates, they offer some sort of funding and that would be just you know, phenomenal if, if Indiana would, would join that push. Um, we could certainly, throughout the entire state, could get a lot more children involved in that, a lot more families involved in that. I, you know, I do, I, agree absolutely with everything Becky just stated. Um, em employers in Wayne County certainly realize that their workforce of the future, you know, are, are the children that are here right now to, to, uh, to some extent. And what we're doing right now, you know, is going to directly impact them in 17, 18 years. Um, so they, I, I, I think um, people are coming to realize, to understand this more and more. Um, but that shared reading experiences that, that families, you know, should be having from birth on just makes such a difference in how, in the whole track that their, that their child follows through school and, and after school out into the workforce. So. Yeah, whatever we can do to promote that, we will continue to do. <laughs> you all obviously need some financial assistance. You all are trying to grow the program. It costs, not a lot, but it costs to be able to buy the books. Is, is financial assistance the only assistance that you all need or are you in need of 
volunteers or others that can help in, in some other way? And if so, how can they reach out to you? How can they contact you? Where on the web, on social media? What, what's the best way? Um, yes. <laughs> yes to all of the above. <laughs> um, we, we love volunteers. Uh, right now, we're still due to COVID and restrictions. And um, we normally use volunteers for the Reading Academy in the summer. And this year, we're still restricted on that. So the, the volunteer part is, is still a little bit laying low. Um, but if someone has a heart and a passion for wanting to just help us organize books, um, get mailings out, uh, several times a year we send out mass mailings and we're starting to um, work with uh, the libraries to send out mailings to kids that are graduating from the Dolly Parton Imagination Library, um, encouraging them to now, now that you're five, go and you've graduated, go to the library and get your library card and continue to get books that you can read. So we're starting to um, begin to work on that, which we'll, we could use some volunteers for. They can contact us through our website. Um, there's a contact button there. Um, so that would be wonderful. Um, and then, as, as you mentioned, the financial piece is always always going to be there. Uh, for Dolly Parton, it really makes a difference in a child's life. And again, they can um, link through our website to make a donation um, to the Wayne County affiliate to us through Dolly Parton's Imagination Library. There are parents, grandparents who are hearing about some of this for the first time, they're looking for resources to help stimulate their kids, whether it's activity pages, coloring, you know, anything of that nature. Do you all supply any of that information on your website or on your social media sites or something that they can go to? Um, not so much resources maybe off of our website. Um, our social media pages will some, I know, you know, we, we try to work with the library and the Arboretum, other places that are, that are having um, activities for children to try to um, spread that word. Certainly we are now that we're hopefully moving into a better, <laughs> better set of times. We're trying we to get out. Hopefully, yes, we are. Um, <laughs> really looking forward to getting out this spring and summer into more community events again, where we would have a lot of those kind of things um, there with us to hand out. So yeah, we hope to well, be back out soon. We often, we uh, are part of or pair with the Early Childhood Coalition in Wayne County. And yeah. uh, we all often, you know, if we're in any, at an event, we're handing out their information and they're able to tap into, I think, resources for families and, and more needs uh, themselves. So we try to partner with the different groups who help, um, who are thinking about the same thing, the, the early childhood piece and the birth to five piece and try to, as partners, all of us uh, in Wayne County, make sure that um, families are getting what they need and, and help for this, uh, for literacy. Absolutely. And certainly if someone reaches out to us, um, we'll do everything yes. we can to, to hook them up with the resources that they might be looking for. Okay. We'll make sure that that, that website um, appears bottom of the screen so everybody knows how to reach you all. Um, before I let you go, I'm gonna give you each a, a couple of minutes to hit anything that maybe I didn't ask you that you feel like you really want the community to know. Um, I, I, you know, I, I, when we started, I came at this and said to you, I don't know what I don't know, but <laughs> this seems like an important topic that the community should be dealing with. I, I wanted to make sure that you all had a chance to speak to it, but there may be something that I, I didn't go with. So Becky, we'll start with you. Is there okay. something I didn't ask or something that you want to express to the community? Um, I think we, we were able to talk about quite a bit of, of uh, helping people understand what we do. Um, I just want to um, push the, the fact that 
it just is so important. And I think everyone needs to just take a minute to realize how we all can help, whether it's as a parent, as a sibling, as a teacher, as um, even a donor, um, because you don't have kids anymore, but you know, it, it's amazing the number of people say, oh, I, I will gladly uh, support a child in Dolly Parton's. Of course I will, you know, but that makes a huge difference. And for everyone to just take time to think about um, how important um, early uh, childhood literacy is, and uh, especially the birth to five piece to try to help them so that the Reading Academy does not need to have so many children maybe involved. Um, you know, we, we hope that the first piece will solve the second piece. Um, but right now, both, both of them are so very important to our community. So just thankful uh, to you to let us talk about this a little more and let people understand all the different ways uh, we're trying to do this. And if they want to get involved or would like to help, you know, certainly every child can read.org is a good place to start. Jackie, how about you? Yeah, so um, I think our, our mission is to open a world of opportunities for growing a love of reading in young readers. And it's, it's actually, it's, it's just very simple. Um, I think the main thing I would want to share is just how critical it is to, to have those reading experiences, those language, not even just reading, but like we talked about the language experiences um, with young children from, from birth and how critical that is to everything they do from, from there on. Um, we are fortunate, um, you know, we're proactively trying to, to get that information out in the community. And we've been very fortunate with all of the um, community collaboration with different agencies and certainly all of our donors and supporters. And we are very thankful for that. Um, we just wanna to continue to get books into the homes of, of all children in Wayne County and be that through Dolly Parton's library or any of our other programs. Um, so we really appreciate you having us be part of this this morning and thank you. My pleasure. Thank you all for giving me the time. I really do appreciate it. Becky Jewison, board member for Every Child Can Read, Jackie Scott, K Ready Program Coordinator. Thank you for your time and thank you for what you're doing. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. We've got all sorts of plants, uh, produce, meat, eggs, honey, maple syrup, baked goods, arts and crafts, some awesome different prepared foods, kettle corn, you name it, down here for um, everyone in the community to come and buy. The cool thing about what we do is that we're 100% growers only and local produced only. So everything that you buy here was actually made here. That's really great because you can know that your money is supporting a local farmer and staying in the local economy and it's traveling less fuel miles and so we've got a lot of really great benefits there. Thanks for joining me on this week's In Focus on Whitewater Community Television's WGTV Channel 11. I really do appreciate Jackie Scott and Becky Jewison giving us some time and having a great conversation. Some things to remind you that are happening in the community. The Winter Farmers Market continues through the end of this month. Um, at the Star Gannett Historic Site, 201 South 1st Street. Uh, still, 
doubling the snap dollars, uh, fresh produce, a whole lot more. That happens 10 until 1. At the end of this month, it will move back to Elstro Plaza. So everybody's looking forward to that, a sure sign of spring and summer. Some other things going on. The Cope Family History Tour is taking place this Saturday. It's an afternoon with at Cope Environmental Center exploring the legacy of sustainability with the Cope family. You can look for Cope Family History Tour on Facebook or Eventbrite. Hayes Arboretum continues a walk with wildflowers. That continues through this Saturday at um, from 9 to 5. Uh, the Yellow Trail behind the Nature Center is where you go. Check that out. Coming up on Monday at 6 p.m., it's a uh, virtual college fair, Wayne County Virtual College Fair. You can register online. That information is there on the screen, iue.edu for forward slash for college fair. You can talk to representatives from the local colleges and universities. If you need information, contact the IU East Office of Admissions at 765-973-8208. Indiana University East School of Business and Economics has a special speaker, uh, Daniel Hungerman, a professor of economics at the University of Notre Dame. That's coming up on the 13th at 7 p.m. You can see that on the IU East Facebook page. Baseball's coming back this summer at McBride Stadium uh, looking for jazz baseball and if your family would be interested in hosting a player reach out to the jazz you can call them at 765-977-1275 or email richmondjazzbaseball at gmail.com Free tax preparation services are available by appointment only you can sign up by calling AARP Volunteer Tax Aid at 765-203-1788 uh, or NATCO Community Empowerment Center, 765-983-4766. For more information, you can also visit uh, mrlinfo.org forward slash taxes. CIS is having their annual uh, sp their spring flower sale. That's going on through the 22nd. If you have questions, you can call 765-983-2263. Join me tomorrow at 2 p.m. for Ask the Doctors on Whitewater Community Television's WGTV Channel 11, WCTV Channel 21, and on Facebook Live. Dr. Huth, Dr. Jetmore continuing to answer your questions. We'll be back next week with another edition of In Focus on Whitewater Community Television's WGTV Channel 11. We'll continue this literacy conversation by talking with some folks from the Early Childhood Coalition for Wayne County Kids. As always, I wish you well. Have a great weekend.